Hello friends, welcome to my channel. So I have heard that many of you are filing for their OINP and aren't sure on what to do and how to pursue your application. So today I'm going to spend some time in helping you out on how you can actually fill out your form if you have been invited by the government of Ontario through the Human Capital Priorities stream. So let's get started. Let's start by going into the Ontario.ca website. I have pasted the link in the description for you to follow. First of all, we'll go through the Ontario Immigration Nomination Program website. And here, as you can see, if you scroll down, you will find the Human Capital Priorities stream. Just click on the link here and that will take you to the page of Human Capital Priorities stream. Now this is where we'll find most of our steps to follow. When we go down in the overview section, we can see that it clearly says that you should receive a notification of interest from the government of Ontario in order to go through the stream. So we'll do that. So if you want to check out some other streams through which you can apply through the government of Ontario for your permanent residencies, go check out and look at this video. Coming back to the Human Capital Priorities stream, as you can see in this section it says steps to apply where you can see two buttons the first one is for steps to apply for express entry streams and the second one is review document checklist. We'll open the review document checklist into a new tab on the side and we'll open the steps to apply for express entry stream on this page. So as you can see in the second tab, I have all the information which I need to complete my application. And on the first one, I have the page where I can get an overview about what I exactly need. And now we'll try to submit this application. As you can see to apply, you'll have to click on the submit an application button below. We'll have to log in into the one key account. If we do not have the account, which obviously you will not have it, we'll sign up for it. We'll create a profile in the OINPE filing portal. So basically we'll create our profile, enter all our details, which we entered into the express entry. Now make sure that all the details you are providing to the Ontario government here has to match your express entry profile. At this point of time, you have not been invited for a permanent residency. You do not have an AOR with the government of Canada, IRCC. So you can technically change your application. So if you think that at some point of time you are filling this form and you have not reached a point where you think that, oh, probably this is not something where I have enough proof to show. I want to remove it. Do remove that from your express entry profile as well. Because if you don't do that, both the applications won't match and that may create trouble for you. Coming back here, we'll need a file number besides the stream for which you have received the re uh, notification and begin your application. So obviously a file number will be created for us. Now let's start filling out the application. The first one here is basically taking us to this Ontario Immigrant Nomination Program website. So make sure that you are landing to the right page to start. We'll click on I'm not a robot. We'll click on continue. And here, as you can see, there are three sections, returning users, new applicant and rep new representative. Just click on the new applicant and then we'll return back if you are missing any documents or if you think that you want to return back to your applications after a few days, click on the returning user. Here, as you can see, all the streams has to go through basically the same form or the same application. Here, we'll choose the human capital priority stream. Because this video is all about human capital priority stream, I'm just focusing on that. But if you are applying through something else, like as you can see, there are a lot of other links available. Pretty much just the document might be different. A little bit of information might be different. But other than that, it should be pretty same. You can still follow what I'm doing right now and feel confident about your application. But at the end of the day, it's your decision. We'll click yes here and we'll create the application right here. Now I'm going to fill out all the information based on my knowledge and all you have to do is just fill out your information as it is available in your express entry profile and in your passport. Last name, first name, date of birth, and then we'll click next. That's basically the application registration that will take you to the page of one key ID. Now here we do not have the one key ID. So what we'll do here is we'll create the one key ID. So we'll click on sign up here. We'll choose an ID. So I'll just put something like uh, Raj Patel YouTube, for example, we'll put in some and some recovery information. Uh, here we'll put some recovery information and we'll click on sign up. Now, as you can see, the confirmation has been sent to my email address. So today as a part of filling this form, I'm going to select the Canadian experience class to help out 
the people who are already in Canada and trying to fill out their OINP application. But for people who are applying through Federal Skilled Worker Program, uh, the information is pretty much same. So don't worry about it. Just follow the process. Uh, but let's go through the Canadian Experience class here. Now here, as you can see, all the information needs to be filled up. This is your profile, which you need to complete. So I'm going to put in all my information here. In the country of residence, I'm putting Canada because I'm filling out for the CEC applicants. Now, what date did you receive the notification of interest here? You have to go back to your IRCC profile and you have to find out the email which you have received or the mail which you have received and see the date for it and just enter the date here. I'm agreeing to everything as for providing the date, submitting. Now, as you can see here, I received my confirmation number. You would have received your confirmation number as well, but do not worry about it. You would have received an email with this confirmation number as well. Just still just paste this number somewhere so you can get back to it later. Uh, let's continue. So all the notes which you need to make sure, you need to make sure that you are only creating one registration per stream. You are, you need to make sure that you are submitting the OINP within the mandatory deadline. As you can see, for the employer job offer streams, the master graduate stream and the PhD streams, you have 14 days to submit the application to OINP. For the Ontario Express entry streams, like this human capital priority streams, you have around 45 calendar days after you receive the notification of interest. For entrepreneur stream, you must submit the application within 90 days. So all these different streams have a different deadline and do make sure that you're filling out this application within that deadline in order to tell the government that yes, you are interested to receive the PNP through the government of Ontario and they won't block you off. The next one is you can check the status of your application through this e-filing portal. You have to submit all your mandatory documents to avoid any unnecessary delays. Now make sure that you have all the application documents which you need. Watch the entire video before you even start filling out this application and then again watch this video when you're actually filling out this application so that you have all the documents you need in hand and you can just follow the process. Now let's continue. So in this application, as you can see that my file number is created. Don't worry about anything. If you make any mistakes, there is a chance to do all over again. So do not worry about it at all. Let's continue. So I'll click on this file number here and then we'll start filling it out for you. As you can see, there are all these sections which we need to fill out today. And I'm going to walk you through all these sections right now. So for people who are actually trying to rush through this process, please my apologies, but I'm creating this video for people who are confused at some point of time in these application processes so that they can come back to it. That's why I'm going to explain each and everything in as detailed manner as possible. So for people who are not interested in watching certain section entire timeline is in the description go jump to the piece of content which you are interested in and go through it so let's continue the first part is basically the assistance with the application if someone is assisting you you can just say no here no one's assisting me is basically we are filling out the general information so in this section you need your express entry profile number so if you are not sure about that just click on the help here. I'm also explaining this to you that the code will begin with E and is followed by the nine digits. So which you will find in your express entry profile. So if you'll go into the, your express entry profile and log in into that express entry profile screen, you can see that there is this number on the top corner. Uh, that's the exact number you need. So you will, you will use that number and basically paste it here and the job seeker validation code. So this job seeker validation code, you will find this validation code in the welcome pool letter. So if you log in into your express entry portal and you will see all the emails you have received, uh, you will find this special mail which you have received uh, basically welcoming you into the express entry pool and also giving you a chance to to get into the pool for job and that's where you will find your this code all you have to do is just put that code right here it has to be a four digit code that's that your crs code now this is also something which you will find in your express entry portal so just go in there and as you can see right here you, it's your uh, CRS score. So just use that score. Do not try to assume your score. 
which is not same as this number and just just use exactly that number and put it right in this application so we'll put the number right here now we'll go to the next section here general information is completed if you have any questions do let me know the applicant information here you fill out the applicant information do make sure that if your work permit if your study permit if if your passport has the middle name in it then do put it right here the other names if you have used at some point of time before your marriage if you have used a different name uh, if you're not sure just click on the help and use as you can see that it says that provide the type of the name for example uh, if you use the name which was a maiden name for you just use maiden name if you have used a name which was before you were married then just say previous married name or something like that so just provide a little bit of detail around that the country of birth place of birth and uh, your gender primary country of citizenship uh, the secondary country of citizenship is if you have dual passport then you can put it right there marital status yeah do choose your marital status uh, passport number uh, do put your passport number here then the passport issue date and the passport expiry date passport issuing country now after we have done that we are going into the contact information section where we will put all the contact information we need to be there in our application it's not a big deal just put your residential address here so i'm going to put my residential address and we'll just select same as mailing address if your mailing address is different than your residential address to select that we'll put english as a primary language preferred language for correspondence if someone's speaking french do that what's your native language now here you do not have to choose english choose your native language which other language do you speak frequently or fluently we'll say english for sure any languages you speak fluently please do add here and the next section is all about the immigration information so this one do you have legal immigration status in canada yes because if you do not have it they will not accept you so you should have it uh, in this case you should have like a worker status uh, because you are applying through human capital priority stream what do you have you should have either a work permit supported by the lmia issued by your employer or you should have a pgwp if you have others i may not be able to help you and you might need an immigration consultant for that so do reach out postgraduate work permit is something i'm going to select the client id number here as you can see the client id number and the expiration date of the document will be given in your document so go check out the document and use that number exactly like how it is written if you're not sure click on help and as you can see the client id will be an 8 or a 10 digit number provided within the letter and just use that number right here and here you'll have to put the expiration date of the document now the next question is have you or has a spouse or any of the dependent ever submitted or been included in the application of permanent resident to immigrate in canada now here as you can see they are not asking you to provide the details if you have applied for the ontario government pn people it's for the ircc permanent residence application so if your spouse is already a pr you might have to say yes in this case and then you have to attach their file number and where was the application of the permanent residence submitted and the date of the application been submitted all these information are text field so do enter those information ircc file number here as you can see the file number can be on the top of the correspondence so that number will be there in their express entry profile and just enter with the best of your knowledge on this most of for most of you it won't be the case so we'll just uh, remove it and we'll just say no have you or spouse or any dependent uh, ever submitted for the pnp ontario so in this case basically the same thing you'll have to provide more details if ever your spouse or your dependent has submitted a pnp application uh, if not just click no for most of the people i'm trying to keep it short and simple so that's why we'll just go with no here in this case have you submitted another application that is still in process with the ynp so if you have used some other stream before this to fill out your application and is in progress you will have to withdraw that application before you create a new active application in this case uh, do make sure that if you have an application that's withdrawn already if not then just click no we'll go next on this one now the education history this is an interesting piece where a lot of people are confused and do make some errors so we'll take some time here okay uh, what is the highest level of education for which you have received your education credential now in this case here as you can see there are lots of options available if you've done your masters you'll have to select this one phds 
two or more certificates, diplomas or degrees. As you can see here, to qualify for the human capital priority stream, you must have a Canadian bachelor's degree or higher or its equivalent. So as you can see that even though it's basically lined up and comes after the bachelor's degree, your highest degree is not two or more certificates, diplomas or degrees. Your highest degree is actually bachelor's degree or probably master's degree because if you have three year post-secondary program, you are not eligible. If you have any other degrees or diplomas, even if there's two or more certificates, you are not eligible. You need minimum bachelor's in order to be eligible with the human capital priority streams. And if Ontario government has sent you a notification of interest, either you have made some mistake in your express entity profile or you have mentioned that you have a bachelor's degree and that's why they have given you the notification of interest and so you'll have to select bachelor's here if you have done master's and phds no question needed right so, so the list of all the post-secondary education you have completed start with the most recent education here here in this case you will enter the most recent education now in this case if you have if your most recent education is in Canada, then enter that information, even if it's a diploma, even if it's a certificate course, that's what goes on here. And uh, basically all these fields are, are pretty much easy to understand. So I'm not going to explain that to you, uh, but do let me know if you have any questions. Just you can always add more uh, information here. Do make sure that you are not leaving any gaps in terms of the education. You're allowed to provide all the education you have provided here. Uh, one caveat here uh, is that if you are coming from your country at some point of time and uh, you came on a student visa and uh, at that point of time you did not show any sort of uh, information or basically you felt that it's not necessary to show that information, you have to make sure that that matches with this application. You should not add any more information than what you added for the visa when you landed in Canada. So you have to make sure that all those information are still relevant. You are not skipping any information. You are not adding any more information than what was already there. Do make sure that if it's a foreign degree, if your bachelor's degree is, is not from Canada, um, then you have to do provide an ECA, uh, which is Educational Credential Assessment. If you do not know about it, it's uh, basically there is an organization called WES which is the World Education Services. So go to their website, basically do make sure that you are getting your credentials evaluated with them. And then you'll have to provide some details about this West number and you'll have to provide some information or, or basically rights to the Ontario government to access your West profile. So do make sure that this West thing is done before you even start your application if you haven't done it yet i would recommend to to finish this first if you have questions and if you think that this is very confusing and you would like me to create a video entirely on how to basically evaluate your document through us do let me know in the comments if i receive enough comments i will do create a video on this Let's get back to the application. So basically you need an assessment done by the education, a recognized education credential institution. So if you have that, have you authorized the ECA to share the results with the IRCC? So generally when you are uh, evaluating your document through WES or similar kind of ECA institutions, they will ask you, where do you want to send this document virtually? It's not the physical document. And you can choose IRCC if it's for immigration purpose. Here you have to show that you also want to send it to the government of Ontario here for the province of Ontario because if you say that you want to use it for immigration purpose they'll only send it to the IRCC which is federal and you want it to be sent to the province of Ontario as well now do make sure that this does not mean that you only have to send it to the province of Ontario you do have to send it to the IRCC as well because at the end you have to get back to the express entry profile after getting your PNP and the IRCC will have to actually look out to your application and they will need your ECA done at that point of time. So make sure that it's been open to both of them. We'll go next in this case and we'll go into the language proficiency. In the language proficiency, in which of Canada's two official language you are more most proficient? So we'll select English in this case. Most of the people will have it. The date you took the test will be written in your credential and date you got the test result will also be written in your credential. So do make sure you're putting the exact dates right there. Now let's go to the em employment section here. Do you have a job offer in Ontario? Before you jump into this and say that, oh my God, again, this one, is this an LMIA? Is this a normal job offer letter? What should I add here? Should I say yes or should I say no? Let me tell you, just click on the help and we'll see here 
A job offer letter is an offer of employment in an occupation listed in the tier category. If you do not know anything about the tier category, do check out my this video here. I am explaining everything about it. The key tier category has to be in 0, 1, 2 or 3 of the NOC code. So if you want to know about it, click on this and it will take you to the NOC code. Uh, if you want to check out your NOC code and more about this tier category, I am putting the link down in the description. So do check that out and do let me know if you have any questions. This should be a full time work continuous and paid and at least should be of length of one year and should not be seasonal opportunity. So if you have a job in Ontario, that is at least one year. So I'll just say yes. In this case, if you have no, just say no. Are you currently working in Ontario? If you're not working, just say no. But if you have a job letter already working in Ontario, just say yes. If it's a full time job, no, then it might create some issues. So just say yes. The, provide your job title, provide your NOC code here, provide your employer information, provide their addresses. Uh, if you have received an LMIA for this job, just say yes or say no, it's not going to make any difference for you. If your intended job is a regulated profi profession. Now, what they mean by regulated profession is that you will have a sort of license or something like that provided if, you're, if it's a regulated profession. Just say yes if that's the case or just say no if that's not the case. If you're currently working in Ontario, say yes. Uh, if you're not working in Ontario, just say no. If you have a valid work permit for the current job, just say yes. And if your work permit is, is basically not for your current job, then just say no. Basically what a valid work permit here means is that if you're working in Ontario under an implied status, then only you should say yes. So as you know that uh, we were selecting whether you have received a post-graduation work permit or whether you have received an, uh, you know, like the closed work permit or an implied status work permit. In that case, you'll have to provide more details about the employer and your job as such. So just say yes in that case, but for most people it will be no. So we'll just say no in this case and we'll go next on this one. Now in the work history section, you have to provide all the paid work experience you have done in last 10 years. And you'll have to start from the most current and the most recent occupation in this case. Now, a lot of people might be confused or might be asking if uh, I have done a lot of part-time jobs while I was a student, should I list that down here? To be honest, you do not necessarily need to put that down here because uh, what this work history is basically trying to get the information out from you is that how much experience do you have in certain NOC code and if it's relevant to them and if it's enough for them to provide you with the PNP certificate. If you have done any random jobs or you know like any jobs or internships while you were back in your home country or even here in Canada, I would say try not to put it unless that is helping out in your application. If you think that's something you have put it down in your express entry profile, then do put it here. But otherwise, do not worry about it. In last 10 years, if you have any full-time work experience and you think that is helping you to get more points and you have mentioned in the express entry profile, do mention it here as well. You can always add more experience. So that's your work history. We'll go to the next section, uh, the other activities. Uh, do you have any other activities excluding education paid work history in the last 10 years? Now, in this case, if you have had any other activities, let's say, it, if you were traveling for business, if you have done any training, if you are unemployed at some point of time, if you volunteered, if you were on the parental leave or anything, what this section is basically trying to do is fill up all your gaps. As we know that you already provided your education history, you have provided the dates of your education, you have provided your work experience history, you have provided the work experience uh, related information. Uh, here, for anything where you are unemployed or you are doing something else or you are on vacation, even if it's two days, if there is a gap of two days between your jobs, then you have to mention it right here and describe it maximum 10,000 words they say, but you can describe within two sentences and that should be all good. Just make Make sure that the dates do match and ultimately at the end of this other activities section you should not have a gap of even a single day in your profile and that's what makes your application complete so we'll go to the next one that's basically about the intention to reside in ontario you must have an intention to reside in ontario in order to basically get that certificate you have to provide all your established ties so if you're working in ontario you have to provide uh, the information about your work now here the information could be the name of your uh, employer the address of your employer 
uh, if you have any family members uh, let's say your siblings are here or your uh, relatives are, he- are in ontario do provide their information similarly and uh, if you have studied in ontario if you have a license uh from the province of ontario for your work uh if your work is regulated then do provide that information as well uh do not try to overthink about this just provide the uh, a brief of the information and the address if needed if it's uh, of some relatives or siblings if it's work uh, if it's um, about a license or something like that do provide a little bit of that information and that should be all good for you uh, you can see more in the help section uh, what they really want to know they want to know uh, more about your employment if you have any job offer letters if your education if you have done any volunteer work if you have any lease agreements in ontario that counts as well if you're already staying in ontario any professional networks if you have you can count that any family ties as i said social connections any previous visits in ontario if you have already visited ontario for even for a leisure purposes if you have visited cn tower or niagara falls something like that to provide that information everything matters do you have your spouse or relative living in canada and are canadian citizen or permanent resident if that's the case you'll have to provide yes and provide all the details about them i'm not going through this because pretty easy to fill it out but uh, do write the information if that's the case otherwise just say no and basically you'll have to sign the application uh right here and and just save it now we'll go into the next section which is the family information section Okay so now let's continue with the family information in this family information section you can see you have to mention if you have any dependent family members or not if you have any you can just say yes here in this case and you'll have to provide all the information about your dependent family member who's going to be with you let's go and look more into the help section it says your dependent family member include your spouse your common law partner or your dependent children as well as their children as well a son or daughter is considered dependent of their parent when the child is under 22 years old so any kid you have who are under 22 years old they are your dependent and you'll have to add their information here all dependents of the family members may accompany you to ontario so that's uh, basically the case they may accompany you you don't have to necessarily bring them in ontario if your family member is a canadian citizen or a permanent resident he or she will not be included in your application so in this case if let's say your spouse is already a pr or a canadian citizen then you do not have to include them in this case and just provide if you have any other dependent family members here if not then just say no i'm not going in detail with this one so we'll just continue with no here in this case now let's go to the settlement funds in the settlement funds section as you can see that you have to provide settlement funds to make sure that uh it's enough for you to maintain or sustain your life within ontario settlement fund requirement can be met through one or the combination of the following things i'm reading out for you guys funds as demonstrated by the bank statements you have to provide bank statements could be your investments could be the fixed term deposits mutual funds uh which can be readily converted to cash so this should not be the things which could not be readily converted to cash or somewhere you have invested and it takes time to to get things out probably a real estate or something like that is not considered uh, annual earnings from ongoing employment so if you have an annual salary available to you like t4s uh, we receive at the end of the year that counts uh, if you have a job offer in ontario if you have a job offer in ontario then that counts as well uh, the salary will definitely help you to uh, be counted in your settlement funds let's say here is an example where you have checked the chart uh, in the ircc website so if you want to know more about this you can always go to your ircc site and you know check how much do you need for per family member here you can see that the size of the family would include you your spouse your dependent children if any uh, minimum you will have is is basically one family member which is you if you have your spouse with you then you need like for two family members it's $17000 right now whenever if you are like watching this video in future do make sure that you reach out to this url mentioned so that you can see what the latest amount is for your uh, settlement fund this is as of 2020 23 coming back to this i'll make sure that i'm also linking this settlement funds link into the description so you can always uh, go to that uh, website even if it's not mentioned here in future 
So here in this case, I'll, all, I, I'll not basically say anything else because I've not provided any more dependent family members in the family information section. So it, it basically calculates it for me saying one and I just have to mention how much money I have in terms of uh, available funds for my day to day expenses. And I can just mention something like, let's say, for example, like $10,000. State your current or future annual salary. If you have a job offer in Ontario or if you already have a job in Ontario, then you can mention your salary here. Let's say my salary is like $70,000. I'll just mention that here. And I think that's good enough because like you only need like $13,000 something here, but you have like more than that. That's that's good enough for you. Let's go to the next section, uh, which is learning about the OINP. This is more for the survey, so you don't have to worry about what you're selecting here or what you should select. In this case, you can just mention anything. I'll just mention OINP website. That's good enough. Now we are going into the main section, which is required document section. Here we'll spend some good amount of time and I'll tell you where exactly you can find each document which are not related to your personal documents. So let's dive into this one. The notification of interest from Ontario. Here you can see see that you have received the notification of interest in your express entry profile what you have to do is just go into that page and now you'll have to print that page by selecting options like these and with that you will save this page as PDF and that PDF file is something you'll have to attach here um, as you can see when I click on upload it will ask me to select this and I can choose a file Okay, uh, photograph, make sure that you have a digital photograph available with you, which meets the passport or the visa requirement. So you can always go to your nearest shoppers drug mart or uh, if you're in uh, BC, you can go to London Drugs or, or any of your local photograph place where you can ask them about the Canadian passport required photo or Canadian visa required photo. Both of that would work. Uh, passport. Here uh, you'll have to provide the copy of personal details page and all the pages that contains Canadian visa and entry stamps. So here you have to make sure that you have all the pages which contains Canadian visas which you will have for sure you'll have a lot of TRVs and you will also have the entry stamps for passport pages. So here it definitely means that you should have at least the entry stamps for Canada but to be on the safer side just take basically the PDF of all the pages and just just put it down here make sure that everything is is one file and don't try to put in multiple files as a part of this also you have to make sure that the passport pages will have the file limit size of 10 megabytes everything else will have a size limit of 5 megabytes and make sure that uh, everything as I said all pages uh, of a specific document are in one file uh, so let's continue with this one the next one is status is document issued by IRCC here the status documents are nothing but uh, the documents which you have received so here in the status document section you would have received the immigration documents throughout your journey in Canada whether it's like your student permit whether it's your work permit you'll have to basically provide all those document when you will click on the upload button you will see all these documents uh, mentioned in the document type you have to provide your work permit you have to provide your study permit you have to provide your temporary resident visas all of them don't miss out on anything because government knows and just upload everything else which makes sense for you now let's go to the next section which is the education section uh, here I'm just clicking on show more to basically give you an idea that if you have a Canadian degree you have to provide the copy of the degree uh, from the academic institutions in Canada as well as the official transcript you received uh, from the academic institution. If you do not have a Canadian degree and instead you have an international degree, you'll have to provide the EC report like the education credential report from an institution something like WES, W-E-S and that report should not be more than five years old from the date you're submitting this application. So make sure that it's as recent as possible. As I said, without that West report being done, you won't be able to finish it. And that West report does take time. So if you are watching this video, even before you received this, I would recommend you to at least get your West report done because it's valid till five years and you definitely need that. So just provide all your information here. When I click on the upload, 
I can basically see that I have, I can provide my ECA for my foreign degrees. I can provide my transcripts uh, for Canadian degrees. I can provide my diploma certificate. I can provide my degree certificates. Even if it's just a certificate course, I have to provide the certificate for that. And anything which I want to count under my education has to go here. Uh, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments. Now let's go to the next section, which is the language test. Pretty simple. You have to upload your language test the TEF and TCF if you have given uh, the French language examination and self paper and IELTS if you have uh, given the IELTS examination. So that's there, that's pretty easy. Uh, you have to provide your resume. Now here in your resume, you have to make sure that you have you are providing your current as well as the past experience. So a lot of time we see that in our resume, we do not put our current experience until and unless we are searching for the new job. So make sure that your resume is up to date and has your current experience, which includes all your duties and responsibilities. So this may not be your typical resume which where you are trying to uh, you know match with the ATS system and trying to get that job here you have to make sure your duties and responsibilities do align with that of your NOC code uh, with each the each of the positions you held uh, and have mentioned in your application as well as your educational history as well so you have to provide your resume nothing else that's pretty okay uh, we'll go into the next section the work history section now this one is a big one so I will spend a little bit more time here okay you have to provide all the supporting documents related to all the periods of work you have mentioned. So do make sure whatever you are mentioning does have the document. If you do not have the document, don't mention them. When I say don't mention them, if you have already mentioned it while coming to Canada, you do not have a choice but to get that document as soon as possible. So what you need here is the copies of your employment and work experience reference letter. The letter must be printed on the business letterhead, which you won't have, your employer will have, which basically gives you the employer's business address and all this information to make things easy for you i am linking down a sample reference letter for you so that you can use that go to your employer fill in your duties and responsibilities all the blanks which which are there in the reference letter and just ask them to create a letter something like that if they are if they have already given reference letters to the people who are applying for oinp kind of route then they will already have a template with them you don't have to worry about it but if your employer does not have anything like that then please try to use the reference letter sample i have given here and uh, i hope that helps we'll go to the next section which is copies of your work contracts if you have a contract job uh, then you have to provide your contract information proof of the compensation here the proof of compensation is a little bit tricky i'll read it out for you and then we'll explain uh, documentation to verify that you were paid for all the periods of work experience stated in the application now how do you do that this may include the copy of the pay slip of the first and the last month of each period of work experience so if you have multiple jobs for each period of job you should have your first and the last month of your pay slip which basically says that from this period of time to this period of time you have done this job and you got paid uh, the income tax document do work or you can provide the letter from the employer if you do not have any of those uh, which states that you are paid the annual salary of this number and these letter if you're giving a letter from your employer that should explain uh, why documentation to verify compensation of work uh, performed is not available they have to explain in this letter why they do not have the pay slips uh, to give it to you while mentioning uh, your salary in this letter so do try to go with the former ones if possible this is basically the worst case situation where you are asking to verify your compensation as a part of letter. Uh, the next thing you have to provide is your CRA statements. Basically, you have to provide the copy of your T4 statements as well as the notice of assessment. So T4 statements are the one you get from your employer. If you do not have them from your employer, you'll probably see that in your CRA account. But in the CRA account, they are not in the PDF version you can download. So it's always better to reach out to your employer and get those T4 forms, even if they are the older ones. If it's not possible, worst case situation, you go into your CRA account and then download it from there, uh, the online version. And the notice of assessment. You have to make sure that you have both of these. The notice of assessment you get when you file your tax and basically it's an acknowledgement receipt that the government has assessed your taxes and you can find that in your CRA account as well. You need it for all the periods of work in Canada you have done. So let's say if you're working since last two years, then you have to provide the T4s of 
basically last two years as well as the notice of assessment of last two years of taxes for regulated occupation if you have a regulated occupation you have to provide your license or the authorization whatever is applicable without that this might not work for the self-employed people this might be a little bit tricky uh, you need to have a minimum of one year of continuous work experience in the last five years if you are being accessed against fsw and you have to provide the following documents to provide your business registration you need to provide your income tax documents the t4a statements if you are self-employed in canada uh, the reference letter from your clients in this case you have to provide uh, make sure that they are providing all the information including the payment details that they have paid you for the work the invoices and advertisement of your businesses whether it's your web posting brochures business cards any promotional material would work which states that you are indeed in the market and are doing a self-employment uh, so all these things as i mentioned has to be for each of the work experience you had so if you have changed a lot of jobs within the time frame after your studies and before you are applying for this uh, you may have a hard time doing this so make sure that you are prepared for that if not if you only have one experience then all you need to give is basically go to that employer and ask for the details uh, let's go to the next section which is settlement funds uh, settlement funds is also a big one uh, so we'll spend a little bit more time here on this one as well if you are using bank statements or the statement account to meet the settlement fund you have to provide these information because now as a part of settlement fund of course you will be providing your bank statements as well as your job information unless you just want to gamble on your job if you have good enough salary above fifty thousand dollars and you know the requirement is like somewhere around 13 as of now uh, that may work but let's say you still want to keep it safe and do want to provide your bank statements then you have to make sure that you have the most recent bank statements of last three months at least on top of that the bank statement must be from an fi uh, which basically contains your account number the balance and also indicates that it's you uh, as the account holder uh, then also you have to provide the most recent bank statement of your spouse or common law if you are providing that as a proof of uh, uh, settlement funds and the copies of your statement uh, if you have basically done any sort of GICs or like fixed deposits uh, invested into mutual funds and a letter from your FI indicating that these funds are available with you uh, if it's a statement that works as well but if not then uh, basically just have to say that you have these funds and the letter should also confirm that the investment can be liquidated or redeemed of whatever the value so if you have any investments been done uh, you have to make sure that the FI gives you this letter I would say the best way to do it is just keep the cash liquid and provide your job information uh, which is basically what I'm doing right now I'm telling you that uh, you have to provide basically the job letter stating stating your position hours of work and wage and you have to provide your two recent pay slips if you are currently working in Canada as a part of this as you can see you have to provide uh, the information about your job offer letter now this can be the same letter which you are providing above mentioning your duties and stuff like that this can also include your position your hours of work as well as your wage makes things really easy and your employer does not have to create two different letters just make sure that you are providing the two recent pay slips if you're working in canada uh, the other thing is the arranged employment if you have an arranged employment uh, or an offer letter from an employer in ontario you have to make sure that you have to provide copy of your full-time job offer from the uh, from an employer in Ontario. You have to provide uh, your work permit if you are currently working in Ontario for the same employer who has offered the job for you. And you also have to provide an LMIA if you have an LMIA. Uh, if your work permit is a closed work permit with the employer, do that. If you have an LMIA, do that. Otherwise, just provide the job offer letter. That should work. And you have to provide your intention to reside in Ontario. Do make sure you have to provide any additional ties or further documents to demonstrate that you have an intention to reside in Ontario if you are already residing in Ontario you can consider it as an optional document but I have also created uh, a statement here as a sample and link is in the description so uh, do check that out and uh, if you want to create a statement of intent to reside in Ontario you can use that as a reference and create your own uh, statement out of it so I hope that one helps as well let's go to the next sections others is basically if you want to provide any supplemental materials or any explanation which basically makes your application stronger now in this case 
this is like totally optional field uh, if you think that there is something you want to explain to the government of ontario your situation any gaps which you were not able to mention before in any other any other form fields then do make sure that you are creating a letter and basically uploading it right here so that's it on your document section if you have any questions on that one uh, do let me know i'll be happy to help you out in the comment section for the family document section here you have to provide the information about all your family members passport um, then you have to provide uh, any documents issued for your spouse let's say if they have an open work permit uh, then you have to basically upload it here if they have any student permit you have to upload it here if they have any trvs that goes here as well if your spouse has a work experience in canada that goes here in this section uh, if your spouse has an education in canada then it goes here uh, do have to make sure that uh, the program has to be at least a full time study and has to be a two years of duration in order to be considered uh, if your spouse has a language test results uh, then do consider that uh, uh, you have to make sure that it's at least about the clb4 uh, if you have any relatives in canada uh, let's say if you or your spouse has any parent grandparent child grandchild sibling aunt uncle niece nephew who is a canadian citizen or a permanent resident in canada then you have to do provide the copies of their document to support the blood relation what document do you need you need to provide the birth certificate of your relative their permanent residence or citizenship the evidence that they are their relative you can provide property document any employment document bank statements tax document or anything like that now in this case now they are definitely asking you to provide information even if it's your uncle or your aunt basically that creates a stronger ties for you in ontario but if you think that you already have some other ties which are strong enough and you do not want to go into this loophole of uh, you know like uh, the father family members i'm sure that if it's your parent grandparent child grandchild you would mention it here but if it's your uncle aunt or niece or nephew you might hesitate and i i would say like in that kind of situation you can choose whether you want to mention or not if you have mentioned it anywhere uh, to claim the points in your express entry profile as well as uh, in oinp then you have to mention it here if you haven't then it's okay for you any other documents which you think would help providing more explanation regarding regarding your family then do provide it uh, in the other section now we'll go to the next section which is basically basically schedule a now here you are agreeing to everything it's it's more for you to just click check boxes and sign uh, the same thing for b c and d so i'm not going through all of them but do read if you are interested uh, it's all about you are agreeing to the policies and how they are going to review your application but you have to like sign and check that you are agreeing to the terms and conditions before you go to the summary page in the summary page here as you can see i have 46 error because i have not finished the whole application for myself i only open this application to explain to you on how to fill out this application but for you this should so show zero error and when you have all these errors completed here it will basically open a place where you can submit the application uh, it will open a button where you can submit the application and then it will take you through the payment page where you will complete your payment and once you complete your payment your application is successfully completed uh, that's all i have for you today i hope that this application process was helpful for you if this was then i would really appreciate if you could like this video and if you are interested to watch similar videos and want to stay updated with anything happening in canada regarding to the finance as well as immigration then do consider subscribing to my channel i try to help people through the knowledge i have as much as possible and with your support i will try to continue to do so so i hope you are having a great day thanks for watching the video and i will see you in the next one